Hi, this is Carly and welcome back to the Mighty Path channel. And today I'm going to dive in a little bit deeper on the gluten casein free diet. So stay tuned. So today we're going to be talking about the gluten casein free diet, the number one diet that probably most parents um, will have or have tried with their child on the spectrum. So it's uh, like the other diets, um, a way to remove um, the irritants and help to reduce the inflammation in the gut. The number one thing that I'm going to say not to do when it comes to the gluten casein free diet is to try and buy processed food because it's going to one, be very, very expensive. Sure, it's time saving, but it's also gonna be full with so much sugar and other things that you probably can't pronounce that you're gonna end up sort of giving up on the health aspect of which is what you're actually trying to improve. So the trade-off's not always a, a good one. The other thing that I would say uh, is not recommended when you're trying gluten casein free is to try to take everything that your family normally eats or your child and then just do the gluten casein free version because if your child loves pasta with tomato sauce and lots of nice cheese and then you're going to try and give them rice noodles with tomato sauce and some soy type cheese or cheese substitute, it is never, ever, ever going to taste the same. And they will be sadly disappointed and feel like they're being punished. And you will have to fight that battle. And trust me, that's not a battle you want to do. So where I would say the best place is to start is to go through and think about what your family or your child eats in a typical week. Start there, write everything down and then go through and say, what is, what is a gluten-free casein meal that we're already eating. Dinner's usually the best to sort of start with. You know, starting with a breakfast when you're rushing off to school in the morning can be challenging and a pack of lunch, uh, again, depending on how old your child is, might be harder to switch out something that they're sort of used to and you want them to, you know, do well um, in their school environment. So I would say dinner and I would start also on the weekends. That's probably probably the easiest. You have more time. You're not necessarily rushing off somewhere um, and to an evening activity or just that you're exhausted from the day's events. Go through. Once you have the list of what it is that you eat, so like, you know, you're one night maybe you're doing um, pot roast and roasted vegetables and another night you're doing roast chicken or a chicken dish that's, you know, you you go through the ingredients and you're saying, oh, there's not really a lot in there. I could maybe take out one or two things and it still have the general flavor. That's probably the, the best way to start. Then you're gonna wanna try to incorporate a few other dishes. And this is where you wanna get your kids involved. The more your kids have a participant in this, the better success that you're gonna have. So what we always like to do whenever we try something new is we usually get a cookbook Kids are visual usually and they like to see a picture of what they're gonna be eating in advance. And we go through and we just have everybody sort of make some choices of what it is that they want. And then we just try them. We just try them and then we grade them. Everybody gets to say what they think this food was. Is it a five out of 10? Was it a 10 out of 10? Was it a two out of 10? Now I'm just gonna say, I don't eliminate anything that's a five out of 10 because in time that may turn into an eight out of 10 once their taste buds and their palates and everything have sort of changed and not everything they're eating is just salty or sweet. So that's, a, that's something that we found that was successful. The other thing is to sort of try to, to work with your side dishes. So, you know, if you're trying to take out um, potatoes, then swap it for something like sweet potatoes and then, you know, cut them into fries. Um, you can do that the same thing with a lot of the squash where you're like, my kid will never eat squash. You know, try butternut squash. That's probably the easiest or any roasted vegetables, you know, avocado oil on it, you know, big um, cracked salt on it, even pepper, um, if, if you're not trying to avoid pepper. Um, that will just, it's all about the flavors. So if your child really likes Italian food, 
then use Italian spices and whatever you're doing. If your child really likes Thai food, then use Thai spices or Indian spices. Your family will then at least be getting what it is that they look forward to in a meal. So Seth's like the best for that because we have uh, some Indian spices, so he'll take anything and just sprinkle some Indian spices on it and everything's butter chicken then to him. So um, I think that's probably, your, you go slow if, you're, if your kids are eating the standard beige autism diet, just go through, look at what you can sort of tweak slowly, just pick a weekend, and start introducing simple things like roasted vegetable. Don't do anything too complicated. And if a kid goes to bed, eat, only eating half a meal. I mean, I'm from the generation where if you didn't eat your dinner, then you just went to bed hungry. And look at me, I never really starved. So I think that uh, it's just, it's, it's gonna be a bit of a journey, but it's totally doable. Now you wanna make sure that you're gonna give it time. So once you're say, eating, you've been doing it and you're at around three, four weeks and you're like, yeah, no, pretty much everything we eat is gluten casein free. You want to make sure that 100% everything you're eating is gluten casein free because you can't just be gluten casein free Monday to Friday and then on weekends eat whatever you want. It doesn't kind of work that way. You have to be in 100% and we always found if you do it as, as a family, that's usually your best bet because then nobody can cheat. Second of all, once you are 100% gluten casein free, then you want to give it about another four to six months to see if there's any changes, positive or negative. And as you know, I jot down just on, on my calendar, you know, good day, bad day, and then try to remember what we ate. I don't, food journals and stuff, when you're a big family, that can be a nightmare in itself. So keep it easy for, your, for you and your family and just try it. Because if anything, if you say, you know what, I don't think there was any change, if your kids eating salad and your kids are eating more vegetables then all in all it was a good thing give me a comment let me know how it's going if you need any um, help with recipes like I said I can post them on our blog and if you liked what you saw like and hit the notification bell so thanks and great to see you on the muddy path